nobody can destroy my principles. Even if the lowest comes, my brother is there. Even if the lowest comes, my brain is strong enough to withstand anything coming my way. That is like, it's a superpower, bro. I swear, I have no fear. When I say I have no fear, I truly tell you I have no fear. There's nothing you tell me right now to do that if he has a strong enough reward, I would have fear for. Nothing. Like, think about it, okay? I've lost everything. I want everything. I've lost everything. I want everything. I've hit the rock bottom. I'm, look at me. I'm chilling, bro. Yes, fellas, thank you very much for coming down. Our pleasure. I feel like you two are literally inseparable at the moment. You remind me very much of Andrew and Tristan. You know, with that brotherhood. Yeah, a lot of people have said something similar. Mm -hmm. And um, for us, it's normal, you know. For us, it's been like that for uh, a long, long time. And uh, I don't know, it's just normal. Before Tristan and Andrew, before we even met them, we were like this, you know. And everything we do, we do it together. And how long, how long have you known each other? Many years, bro. Many years. And but there was like a there was like a moment before and after that, you know, solidified our relationship. Mm -hmm. We were like, okay, so this guy, and I, I mean, never since then, it's like pretty much every day together. Mm -hmm. So we do everything. When I say everything, everything. You live together. Yeah, we live together. Um, I mean, everything. You know. <laughs> 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 but but yeah, we are we are brothers, and yeah. we enjoy. It's not like blood brothers where you just have to protect your brother because yeah, yeah. it's your blood. No, this is like ch by choice, you know, in a way it's um, mm -hmm. more powerful at times, yeah? You choose to give everything for your brother and I'll do anything for, for my brother, anything. When mm -hmm. I say anything, there's nothing that you can think of that can physically be done that I wouldn't do. That's good. That, 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 make, my brother. <laughs> that, that makes you feel pretty good, eh? <laughs> it's true. So, I mean, your background, your career has been pretty wild. I've been doing a little bit of research and I've been shown this world which I didn't even know existed, the whole gaming world. So we're going to get into that very shortly. Your background, what is, is that in, are you in property? Yeah, um, uh, my background is uh, real estate, mm -hmm. like the classic developer. We buy plots, we construct, we sell apartments. This is my background and uh, we do but many stuff. Like mm -hmm. it's not just real estate. This is like the main, what I grow. Um, but I do with my brother, a lot of businesses. We like, we have, we had some startups we built. We bring them to a point, we sell them. And um, also now we have uh, good projects that are going on and uh, we are working on and we will make them very big in Dubai. So you got like two very different skill sets and you're like combining them together. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Yeah. In a city where the possibilities are endless. Yes. That's pretty much what it is, yeah. Oh. yeah. And I'm learning a lot from him, uh, but I do know there are things that he's much better than me at, at and mm -hmm. uh, vice versa. And uh, we just know our strengths and weaknesses and embrace each other up. And uh, that's yeah. how it is. It, it really we are, works. It's we very... are a perfect team. We yep. are different, but we have the same principles. Mm -hmm. And this is the point why it works so good together, you know? Why we had a lot of a lot of things in life and we agree always together mm -hmm. into this, you know? And if there is something about business, we speak about like nobody's perfect, but Alhamdulillah, we are very, very close to each other. We are like more than blood brothers, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So this is, you're very different from uh, obviously how you, you started off in the gaming industry. When did you start playing games? Were you 14 yeah, so years old? I was like... No, 11 actually and mm -hmm. uh, I saw my dad playing games and he when he came back from work and he would play with his friends and everything and one day he goes to the restroom and says can you just play for me and then I would play and apparently I did very good mm -hmm. and then he when he came back his friends told him his work friends told him why don't you just do his homework and just you let your son play and ever since then it was like the beginning of my uh, you know me uh, in the world of video games and what was it, what was the game yeah it was uh, it was half life Okay. It's called Half-Life, which is like the pre-Counter-Strike, right? Mm -hmm. uh, shooter game, whatever. And yeah, it was, it was, ever since then I had my computer, they bought me my computer. And ever since then, you know, I started deploying some more time into it. And when I realized that I could be very good if I invest time on it, then I started doing so. And also I had always very, um, an entrepreneurial mindset, you know, a businessman mm -hmm. mindset. I always wanted, was trying to fix problems. So um, if there was no, uh, for example, uh, if there was no way to play against people of your level, which back then was very hard to do, uh, find people that are at your level. If you're very good, it's hard to find people that are very good. I, I, I would put together um, 
uh, it didn't really make money, but yeah, so things it, to, to to so that you can play against people of your level. And so I always thought about solving problems even when I was like 13 years mm-hmm. old. Because I, I saw that there was a, a very early interview where you said you just wanted to be rich. That was like one of the main <laughs> focuses of your life. But did you even know that there was a possibility to do that playing games? Because it was very different back then with the technology and the money that was available from playing these games. And a lot of these tournaments, I imagine, didn't even exist. Yeah. So did did you think that there was going to be a future in it? Um, I didn't think that far, but I knew that I would always figure out a way. I, mm-hmm. I, I, no, even when I was... 13, 14, 15 years old, I didn't have like the fears you typically have as a teenager. You know, mm-hmm. I was just, I knew life would be good to me. Yeah. I can't explain why. I just knew that I would figure things out. And I knew that uh, whether it's this direction of video games or a different direction, I would just figure out a way. Mm-hmm. I would see people with uh, very nice cars and I would always think to myself, well, you know, good to him, you know, good for him, no jealousy, nothing. And, and, and I would just feel to myself that one day I'll be that guy. Mm. And I don't know, bro, I always felt very good about people that were successful and I thought I deserved the same and I would earn the same. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know exactly what was the direction. I just knew it was going to be, life was going to be good to me. And alhamdulillah it is. So you you started off, I guess League of Legends was the 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 main game which you spent the majority of your career playing. At some point it was League of Legends, which is a game played by a hundred million people. And I was considered one of the best ones, right? And, um, but, but even as me playing video games. It was not really about uh, playing video games that made me happy. It was competition. I just, I'm just a very comp- competing person, yeah? Competitive. I've, 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 I've seen the times when you lost some of the competitions and you looked yeah, I devastated. Yeah, I was just, <laughs> like you could tell you don't like to lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worst moments of my life by far are moments where I lose an important tournament or a company I've created loses a very important contract, then I can't sleep. I can't sleep. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter who I have by my side. At that moment, I realize I'm alone. Mm-hmm. I can't sleep. I can't stop thinking about it. And it's just pure rage of why didn't I... And then I go back in time. Yeah, I could have done better there. I could have done better there. And I just replay the things in my head a thousand times. I, I guess it's the, the, it's the beauty and the beast of competition, yeah? Yeah. Uh, the beauty and the beast of business too. If, if you don't feel... Very bad when things go wrong, you will uh, not achieve the very good things that will make you feel very good mm-hmm. in business. So it's the same thing. So I guess with with the gaming, the, the the opportunity for making money came to the fact that it was like a the, the game itself was like a competition. Yeah, and you could almost you you would have these teams that would compete against each other, which would down the line obviously draw a big audience, but also to be a lot of money and winning prizes. Which is interesting because I used to play a lot of games when I was a kid, but it wasn't those types of games. I used to play like, Theme Hospital, mm-hmm. Roller Coaster Tycoon, so like single the, player Theme uh, Park, okay. uh, Age of <laughs> Empires. I see a thematic here, like, like strategy games, yeah, RTS. But it yeah. wasn't like I, I, did, I never liked playing the competitive games. I just liked yeah. the karma ones where I was just yeah. building things. But I spent a lot of time. Like, I think I actually damaged my eyes because I used to watch I'm sure, bro, I'm sure. the screen for uh, like full days of playing games. Yeah, I'm sure. For me, it was like competitive games. I, I always played football when I was younger. I played paddle, I told you. I was like, and I was taking it seriously, you know. I, I'm very competitive. I did swimming when I was younger as well. I did all kinds of sports. And, and this was the most accessible way to compete against others and show them I'm better. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, in, inside my soul, even right now, like... A big portion of the reason why I want to conquer the world is to show everybody that I'm better. Yeah. I can't explain why, it just is in my soul, you know? I want to show everybody, if I do a beach club, it's going to be the best, the best beach club in the world, period. Right. Guaranteed, it'll happen. And I want everybody to see it, to visit it, to experience it. If I make a company about X, Y, Z, I want everybody to see that I'm the number one in that field as well. Mm-hmm. I don't know, it's in my heart, it's in my soul. I feel like God gave me this body, my parents gave me this body and this mind. And I have to squeeze as much value as possible out of it. Mm-hmm. I have to do the best I can with what I have. I said, were you into gaming? Um, I was. <laughs> <laughs> it's like um, there is a different world, you know. Like I was playing games, yeah. sure. Like uh, I don't know 
one person who was not playing games when he was a child. Yeah, yeah, I had, I was always uh, like playing games. I was waiting for the new PlayStation. I was waiting for the new games, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I was never like following so hard on the games mm -hmm. because um, uh, since I was young, I had also like dreams in my mind, and um, I started with real estate since I'm 16 years old. Now I'm 29 years old. Like I'm mostly the half of my life in real estate, you know. Yeah. And uh, now I did my real estate career. I brought it to the point and Alhamdulillah, uh, we are now going forward for the next projects. And uh, yeah, my brother and me, we are very ambitious and uh, we have uh, the same view uh, for business and uh, in the same time we are different and that makes us so special mm -hmm. and nothing can break us. Like we are always going forward. You know, he, he's a winner. He cannot lose how you say it. He's yeah. a winner and he will win always. Yeah. He has the, you feel the energy, you know, mm -hmm. when you stay with him, he's like, even if, if he has a moment where is he quiet, but there is a moment, bro, you, you feel in the second, okay, this guy, he got to make it. It, it. It's always there. We, there's no, maybe we have a way and we are walking and there's no light. And then there's a small light and he takes this light and he make it big, bro. Mm -hmm. He's, he's just, he want to, everything, what he is doing, he's doing to the fullest. If he's uh, enjoying with me, he enjoy to the fullest. If he is going out with a girl, he do it for the uh, to the fullest, you know? <laughs> Always. If he's doing business, yeah. he's doing business to the fullest, bro. I swear. He's like a person. I never met a person like him. Mm. Never. Well, he's I like remember a, we, uh, I think it was uh, Cooper, it, I invited me to dinner. That was when I first met you. Mm -hmm. And then even just after hearing you talk, and I was like, this guy, this guy seems interesting. Like, I need to find out more <laughs> about what he's about. Yeah. But so it's, it's weird because with your personality, I can't see how that would have worked well with you uh, being in like a team because I feel like... Oh, yeah. Okay, you know, that's a good like, point, yeah. Because in a team, you all kind of have to work together. And I imagine there was probably times where if maybe a team member let the team down, that would probably piss you off. Bro, I was bit. ruthless and I am ruthless. Like yeah. I will fire someone even someone that might be close to me or a, not a friend because not really friends, but somebody that is relatively close to me, I will fire them without thinking. Mm -hmm. Because if if they're, if you're slowing me down, I'm sorry. You know, we can go uh, have a beer, but... But what if in some of these games and tournaments you were the one that fucked up? Then I, I blame myself hardcore. So you're, always, you, you, you're open about... Yeah, of course. I'm, I was fairly judging the situation, you know, or mm -hmm. trying to fairly judge the situation. I'm sure not always happened because when you're truly competitive, uh, you sometimes uh, might uh, ignore some of the weaknesses in the moment, but then you in hindsight look back and, I mean, I was very, very harsh on myself, really harsh. And mm -hmm. still to this day, I am, you know? Even if we have a meeting or something, how many times do, I'm like going through the, to the smallest detail. Yeah, I shouldn't have done this. And it's like the smallest shit. You can't mm -hmm. even like, I, I like to go hard on myself because I want to continue improving, you know? Mm -hmm. that, that's actually, that's what life is about for me. You know, it's about constant growth and experiencing life to the fullest with my brother. That's it. That's yeah. the two things I care. But a team, he, he's like, he's working really, very well in a team. A team has different levels and need a leader. And yeah. he's the leader of the team and he gives the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. So, yeah, and I, I think that the, the way in which I deal with uh, being part of a group is it comes naturally that I tend to lead the group, okay? Yeah. And I I have a belief and once I know enough about the topic, I make a call and then yeah. people follow the call. Even if the call is not the right call because everybody follows the call, it becomes the right call, you know? That's what I learned. Mm -hmm. Is that you'd rather be assertive and convincing and sure than right. Yeah. I, that is the, that is what I've learned a thousand times. Like you can, I can tell you tomorrow. Um, imagine tomorrow is Wednesday. I can say tomorrow is Thursday. You, you you might know it's not Thursday. You might know it's Wednesday. But if everybody here believes tomorrow is Wednesday, majority of the room believes tomorrow is Wednesday, and yeah. tomorrow is Wednesday. You know. Yeah. And, I think and, is, is a, there's a lot of sheep, and a lot of sheep need to look up to someone to almost yeah. take the like. There's a lot of people that need a leader. I Always. feel that's why. Andrew became so popular because yeah. people needed someone to look yeah. up to. And and when people are born, they are born a certain way. Mm -hmm. You know, you're born 
sometimes with a nice heart, sometimes with a more evil heart. Sometimes you're born a soldier, sometimes you're born a warrior, sometimes you're born a leader, sometimes you're born a caretaker, mm -hmm. just like ants. And I believe that is true. And I think that the best thing you can do for yourself is to figure out who you are and embrace that person. There's nothing wrong with not being the number one as in the, the, the color, but you might be the best supporter, the best operations guy, the best something, you know, just figure out who you are. The problem right now, I feel, is that people that are into self-development automatically wanna be the boss in the room, automatically wanna be the king. And the problem of that is that you might not be built like that, mm. you know? Like it's it's okay if if you're not built like like that, but you're built like you know somebody that is um, incredible you know, uses logic to make all arguments and is very well spoken, great orator. Maybe you can be an entertainer, and you know whatever it is, you know you can, you have to play to your strengths. Yeah. And right now you see a lot of people, yeah. for example, with with um, Andrew, which to me, by the way, I think Andrew is one of the greatest things that that's happened in recent history because it's helping rebalance, I guess, the way people think. It was going too much one mm, way, yeah. and now it's a bit rebalanced, which is a good thing. And he was the first doing this at this scale. Uh, but at the same time, one of the correlations with this is that a lot of people now are smoking cigars and they think they're the mafia and they think, you know, and if you're, if you're not built like this, if you haven't grown up like this, if you're not mafia, you're not mafia. It doesn't matter what you do, you will not be mafia, you know? And uh, one of the reasons why we say, my brother and I, that we're so different, you know? I grew up poor, he grew up poor. However, I grew up with not a lot of physical, um, uh, how would you say, physical uh, danger. Oh, okay, okay. He grew up with some physical danger. Then the way he's built, the way his head operates, the way he thinks about situations is very different than the way I think about situations. I tend to think of people, um, uh, of the best of people more so than him, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. which sometimes is a good thing, sometimes is a bad thing. You see what I mean? But we're both playing to our strengths. We're both I think the way we are. You can say it from your way when you saw us the first time when yeah, we yeah, yeah. went to the. I feel like you uh, were more sort of assessing right, the situation. Right. That's right. Yeah. I'm. I'm like, how to say? He's my brother. Is very open. Yeah. He's speaking what he has in his heart, and he's going forward like massive. And I'm like in his back, you know. I'm analyzing the people around us. You can well, not. You, need, you, you need can. That. You cannot let enter anybody in your circle you know you have yeah. to you have to take care who is in your circle yeah, yeah? and this is uh, very important and we don't need people uh, in our circle who just thinks about money who just thinks about to get support from us you know even just if, thinks about even, girls, even thinks if about... there yeah even if there's like one guy um and he wants to make business but he has he is not good hearted we don't need this Yeah. We don't uh, we don't need these people in our life, you know. We want to surround ourselves with good people, with good-hearted people, uh, with people with an open mindset, going forward together with them, mm -hmm. you know. Like, alhamdulillah, we have money. We we are in a good point in our life and uh, we just look for opportunities uh, to make uh, money with our brothers, with our good circle, you know. Yeah. This is uh, what do we look for. Even I've noticed that as well, as you become more successful, people want to get yeah. involved because they want to get a bit of clout. And, and if you give everybody face, yeah. um, you are you are touchable. Yeah. You are touchable and they can fuck you. You yeah. know, I know you have to believe this, but um, our slogan is nobody fucks us. Mm -hmm. That is our slogan. We have one slogan is nobody fucks us. That's it. And, 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 and the way in which that comes to fruition is many, many ways, you know, like we don't give face to people that uh, don't deserve us to give them face. Uh, we don't add people to our circle that are simply, we know for a fact, um, we, we don't know yet for a fact they're good hearted. Mm -hmm. We give opportunities to people or we give one opportunity. And uh, that's it. Yeah. We don't uh, add, we, we don't deal with worms. We don't deal with uh, people that uh, we know can be weak around women or can be weak around money or can be weak physically. We just, or if we do, we they have their own role in our lives. We don't give them the full, uh, we don't open up to them fully. We don't, just is how it is, you know? And um, we will never be in a position, inshallah, where uh, we get fucked. And if we are, then we'll learn the lesson. But I don't think that'll happen. Yeah. So you've, you've obviously become extremely successful with your career in gaming. I want to know the very early days, there was obviously not much money in it, but there were signs of your entrepreneurial spirit when you, I believe you you started, you were one of the first to start streaming yeah, yeah. the competitions. Yes. So what, gave, I, what gave you that idea? Well, it's, it's, I started creating content essentially, 
because I saw that, okay, so a lot of people are interested in what I'm doing. Also, I think I have pretty good charisma and way to talk and uh, I can uh, reach a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And then if I reach a lot of people, I can then have a lot of opportunity to sell this reach to the partners eyeballs. and stuff like that. So eventually that's exactly what I did. I became not only a professional player, but a content creator. And at the same time, my own salesman, my own manager, I was negotiating contracts with different sponsors and mm. started dealing with multinationals. And at the very beginning, I had no idea what I was doing, mm. but I refused to use an agent. I refused to use a manager. I, I wanted to do everything myself and very long days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I learned the ways of business. I learned how to make value, create value for a company. I learned what happens when you don't. Mm -hmm. And uh, which killed a lot of the entitlement that superstars and people, uh, influencers and content creators have, actually. They have a sense of entitlement. They believe they deserve everything. Well, I know what brands are interested in and I know how to make them money more so than they pay me. And if you do that enough, everybody wants to work with you. Yeah. And that's the reputation and credibility I've developed in my industry, even after, which I'm sure you're yeah, going to ask yeah, me about, yeah, yeah. even after what happened, um, the famous cancellation, even after then, if if I would call anybody in the world of video games globally to do anything that can create money, can generate money with them, there's not one person on the planet that would say no mm -hmm. because they know I can't do it. They know that if Carlos is involved, oh. this will make money. And that is the reputation I've built over now 17 years. You know, Not a single time I have committed a single mistake pertaining to doing business. I mean, of course, you you know what I mean. There's always yeah. problems. There's always mistakes, but um, but uh, I always fix them or learn the lesson and or repay the value back. I've had um, sponsors uh, want to pay me money, me refusing the money, even though I was I might have not been very good money wise, just because I knew that the value I was generating was not at the level that I wanted, mm -hmm. and then that gave me three four years down the road. Yeah, a multi year deal that was worth significantly more. Why? Because they see, you know, I will never give up my principles for some cash yeah. right now. That's a good lesson. I think way too many people sell out too early. And even with my career I've had, I've had loads of opportunities come my way, but I'm just like, nah, because I think I'm either worth more than that yeah. or I don't want to sacrifice what I believe in and what my values are exactly. just to make a quick buck. Very good. Halas, and then Very good. You, you do that enough, everybody will want to spend time with you. Mm. The, tr the truly good people will fight to spend time with you, will fight to do business with you. The mm -hmm. truly good people. And it's a good filter against worms. Yeah. You know, if, if, if you're like this, you automatically, you know, don't deal with worms. So you were the founder of G2, was G2, G2 Sports? Yeah, G2, G2 Esports was G2. Yeah, everybody knows So, G2. okay, so I'm... I don't have a clue about this industry or yeah. how it works. So I'm uh, just be patient with me. How the hell do you go about setting up your own team or organization? Like, is that an easy thing to do? I guess now it's much harder, but back in the day, was it I mean, easier? Nothing is easy, especially because I, I bootstrapped the company with what I earned as a player and my other things going on. Mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't always smart with money. So I put all the money I had, including taxes I owed, into the company. Which you had earned from like streaming yeah, sponsors. Yeah, business in general as well. I did a couple of things on the side. I this was is always, when you were with SK? Yeah. And I was always hustling on the side. Yeah. Man, you, 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 you know a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I was always hustling on the side. And I was always doing things to make money. And I put all the money into my company. Because I said, I want to jump into the pool without knowing how to swim. You know? mm. And I will figure it out. And um, and I did. I did. I did. It, it was... What were the what were the early struggles that you had? Bear in mind, you you've come into this, you don't have a clue what you're doing. Yeah. What was the initial hardest things? Which well, you had first to face? of all, is to decide what I'm gonna do, mm -hmm. what kind of business, right? Just so that people understand, esports is video game competition, and what I created was an esports organization, which is imagine if Real Madrid, instead of playing football, played uh, video games, competed in video yeah. games. However, I always had a different take on what my company should be about because Real Madrid just plays football. There's not a lot of other stuff they do besides, yeah, selling merchandise and stuff like that, but they don't really understand um, how to tell stories. They have no idea how to tell stories. Everything you see from Real Madrid is legacy. Mm -hmm. They are very successful because they're 120 years old and they have a lot of trophies they raised in the past, but there is not a single uh, cine cinematic or video or storytelling that they do 
that shocks you. If they get Cristiano Ronaldo, they sell many jerseys. If they don't, they sell a bit less mm-hmm. jerseys, you know? And and I always thought that was a problem with that because in esports, in, tra- in, in video game competition, it was very similar. And I had a different view. So what I ended up creating is a company that the best way to explain what it is, is G2 is what would have happened if Marvel bought Real Madrid. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it's a combination of competition mixed with storytelling. And even at some point we hired in-house cinem- you know, f- people for cinematics and doing animation and stuff like that. So yeah, I always had a different view on entertainment at large and sports and esports and it's all entertainment. It's yeah. like if you're gladiators in an arena, of course, the gladiator that always wins, yeah, people will sort of like him, but the gladiator that wins and he's a motherfucker, he's, got he's just doing, yeah, he's doing stuff around, he's dancing around, laughing at opponents or just being himself and being interesting. Then that's, even when he loses the fight, the Caesar does like this because he wants him alive. Yeah. Because every time that gladiator is playing, every time the gladiator is fighting, everybody, the Coliseum is full. That was G2. Oh, okay. But, so, the most watched, most followed, also most winning team in the world by far. Yeah, I, I saw a statistic. In 2022, G2 was the third most watched organization in the world. And that is without uh, being part of three of the games that essentially boost the numbers up mm-hmm. for no reason. But yeah, if you on average, uh, minutes watched per game played, G2 is number one by far. We are the... And it's, it was entertaining. People wanted to watch. Yeah, everybody, everybody. Every, like everybody wants to watch you too. Even haters watch you too because they want us to lose. Lovers watch you too because they want us to win. They all fight against each other. Every time there's a drama, people want to talk about you too, you too, you too, you too, everybody too. And and I was the face of that organization for the longest time. Even to this day, many people still put me as, as such. Um, Where were people watching this? Yes, in the online. Like, in, is, uh, it, is it was it YouTube or was it like what was the uh, main YouTube, Twitch, uh, also in uh, in uh, some. Uh, traditional TV as well. They would uh, air a lot of the games. One time I was actually in a in a barbecue place in America and I see my team playing on TV, <laughs> I swear. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's true. They're actually playing right now. And this was just live mm-hmm. right there. We got second in the tournament actually. And um, yeah, bro, it's, moments like those happening all the time. And uh, if, if I would be, if I'm walking anywhere, there's a high chance people will want to mm-hmm. take a picture or something because I'm the owner of G2. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. So yeah, yeah this is it. It's very fun, bro. Honestly, it's, a, it's an industry that not, not a lot of people know it exists, but it's an industry that is honestly very, very fun, especially the way I was thinking about it. Yeah. Well, as, as these stats are mad, apparently the global esports audience is to reach around 532 million people with 261 million watching more than once a month. That's right. That's so many people. That is insane. It's really insane. And think about the, the amount of money video games makes is is ridiculous. Everybody plays video games. Everybody plays video games. Everybody that plays video games needs either a console or a computer or a phone, right? Mm. It's like the amount of dollars invested to play video games is insanely high. You compare this with the movie industry back in the day when it was at its peak, you still paid five, six euros to to go to the cinema. Mm -hmm. And you maybe went there, if you really love cinema, maybe 15 times a year. That's it. Mm. Now compare that with the two thousand dollars you're spending on a computer, sixty euros you're spending per game, or or or, or in-game items you can buy. Uh, the, our jersey costs round about you know ninety euros, hundred euros, and some people buy everything we have on stock. Many people buy everything we have on stock, which is up to three thousand euros a year, maybe four thousand euros a year. Like the amount of money invested yeah. in this is insane. You could put the 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 brand or the logo on literally anything. Yeah, yeah. Also in-game items. You know, we, we do sell in-game items of uh, G2. G- well, give me an example of in-game. Like for example, Counter-Strike, right? In Counter-Strike, you have weapons. You can put a G2 logo in the weapon that costs you money. Oh. And we get money from that, yeah. Or, uh, yeah, there's every game, you know, yeah, there's a uh, Rocket League, which is a uh, flying cars. Uh, football, soccer with flying cars is very, very interesting. And we have a G2 car that people love and people are just like... What percentage of the revenue coming in was coming from the in-game purchases? Do you know? Um, yeah, I'd say I'm, I'm going into uh, how much revenue and stuff like that because it's, it's private. Okay. But probably in terms of, I don't want to, I cannot give the full amount of revenue that the company makes. I probably would make in 
seven million dollars a year in the last year, probably six seven million dollars a year, uh, and this always continues growing, continues to grow, thirty percent year over year. Mm -hmm. God, that's crazy. Maybe forty percent year over year. My brother is a genius. He know <laughs> how to think uh, over the frame. You know, like mm -hmm. really, he can create something from nothing. Give him a, give him some ideas, then he starts to work on, and he creates a project, like. You know how it is. You start also from the bottom. Now you are here. Yeah. yeah? And uh, you know how to create your own thing. But it's just, you, you have your, I mean, you have your vision and you do it well and you start to create more and more because you go more in detail. Mm -hmm. yeah? And he's also like, he is a genius in that. Like you can not think about uh, some topics, how he goes over these topics. And he, I say to him, man, How you come on this idea? Explain me the way how you think about to come uh, to this idea. Like, so your brain is just working nonstop, basically. Yeah, nonstop. Yeah. I'm always thinking about how to. Well, it used to be how to make money. Mm -hmm. Now it's more so how to reach more people and how to um, conquer the mm -hmm. world, whatever that means. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm 32, bro. I and and I have more ambition than I've ever had. Yeah. So I don't think that we're gonna stop anytime soon. I'm curious to know. So you were. Uh, When you started it, you you're obviously you're managing a team of people. What makes a good gamer? Mm, actually, that's a good question. So I think that because were you were you picking p people based on their skill, but also their personality, or was it just pure yeah, skill? No, no, no. It's not pure skill. Like uh, first of all, you need a baseline, which is you need to be gifted enough physically to having you know the reflexes, eye hand coordination, quick thinking. Um, high enough IQ to understand things quick, connect the dots quick. Um, that's very important. That's a must have. It's a bit like chess where you have to almost think ahead. Well, or is there no way to do that? And well, I think that chess is more planning and video game competition is more active in the moment. So like yeah. a millisecond reaction yeah. time. And, but there's also planning. Yeah. So a very good chess player some of those skills can translate well into some games. Yeah, mm -hmm. Not all of them, but some games. And um, But then what, what you see, the common denominator of all these guys is that they think they're number one. They th Like every great player thought he was the greatest player. Mm -hmm. I swear. And um, it's almost like blind belief in how good they are. And some of them are more aggressive. Some of them are more passive. But all of them, if you beat them, um, they automatically think it's their fault. It's not that you're better. It's their fault. They had a bad day or they had a... All of them. Mm -hmm. All of them. Some of them might react telling the other guy to fuck off. Some of them might react by straight up ignoring, ignoring the guy. But all of them will generally believe that it was just a one thing that happened one time. And if they fine tune a little bit, next time they got him. So that's one thing that I see as common denominator for sure. And then secondly... In, in football, for example, the, the game of football has never changed. It's very similar across the board. Yeah, maybe the meta, the, the way Italian teams used to play 30 years ago, the Catenaccio, you know, playing back and stuff like that, that has changed over time because teams started taking advantage of that with some specific pass, passing lines and formations and stuff like that. But not a lot has changed. Here in video games, every two, three weeks, the game changes slightly. So they have to be on their toes and they have to all the time find new ways, more creative, unique, fresh ways to play the game and be unexpected. So a, a mindset of self-development, self-improvement, growth is required. How much Those practice would an average competitive gamer need to put in per week? Per week? I'd say from 60 to 100 hours. It's quite a big investment. Yes. Yes, it is. How does someone know if it's potentially a career worth pursuing or whether they should just give up because i i got asked a question i remember this someone asked me when i did a q a and they were like oh do you ever play video games i'm like no I, i don't waste my time playing video games and then i thought actually that wasn't a very good answer because there's actually a lot of people who were spending a lot of time playing video games and are making a lot of money and there's people like you that have done that and have turned it into a huge organization which has made you millions so how does someone know if they should continue to pursue it or whether they should be like, okay, I'll do it for a bit of fun, but I'm going to spend that time learning other skills. I mean, so there's two points, right? 
Point number one is that I, I, I don't think there's a single business that exists that I cannot do. I think that the skill set required to make the biggest, most successful organization in the world of video games is the same skill set required to put together the best beach club in the world. Same exact skill set. Yeah, little fine tuning here and there, but same, same, same. Um, now, secondly, if the question is how to become a professional player, and, and well, and I have proven myself through many different businesses that I have now taken part in, that that is true. But now point number two is, um, if you want to be a professional player, it's the same way as if you want to be a pro boxer. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you might be good, but can you be the greatest? You know, can you be the number one? And if the answer to that, I mean, the answer to that can only be uh, answered if you do this for a long enough time frame, in a long enough time frame. But yeah. I have also an answer on this. Like, you know, you need, you need a good leader, like my brother, I swear. Like, you, how many, how many good football players outside? Yeah, sure, good point. They don't have a good manager. And, they don't yeah. have good contacts. They don't have someone who's bringing them up. Mm -hmm. And you need to know someone in this scene, like this legend of the scene. And uh, when he has you in the team, he can bring you up. Like, you have skills, but you have to convert it in, in, in the real world, you know, right. to show them um, your skills. Yeah, is, I, I think definitely that's very, very important. You know, like having people that coach you, mentor you, tell you, give you the way, you know, because yeah. even if you are incredibly talented, if you don't know yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. the way in which to go, it's hard to land in the promised land, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, again, same for a pro boxer, same for, a, you know, I'm sure like you see Tyson, for example, Tyson wouldn't have been where he is without his coach and mentor mm -hmm. and almost father figure, you know? Uh, that's how it is. That's literally how it is. All yeah, these people need... Michael Jordan needed a coach. Well. There you go. There you go. Everybody needs someone that yeah. shows them the way. And you have to look for that someone mm -hmm. constantly. So I'm curious to know, I don't know if there is like a number one ranked top gamer, but let's say the average gamer who's killing it at a certain point in time, how much money would they be making in today's day and age? I, I paid players several million dollars a year. Really? Yeah. On your team? Yeah, yeah, on my company. That's the money I paid. That's pretty crazy considering you were, when you started, you were getting I know. like what, $100? That, 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 that was part of my, that was part of my, actually, I remember I sold one player for $5 million. And uh, that was the, that's the, still to this day the highest recorded um, per, uh, transfer. Mm -hmm. a player. I have bought players for a million dollar plus, $1.2 million, $1.5 million. I saw another one for $2.5 million. And like, this is, these are numbers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I always had in my head, I wanted to um, uh, have players that come by Ferraris and stuff like that. Yeah, I was yeah. always in my head as a dream. I don't know why, but I always wanted to facilitate that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. But funny enough, when they start buying Lamborghinis and stuff like that and Gucci, is when I started to realize I should get rid of them because they lost their fucking mind. Yeah. <laughs> it's true, though. It's true. It's true. Yeah, you, you'll show them, like, literally the the fun side of the world, and I guess they'll stop playing games as much and well, it's like stop practicing. Some people are so committed to their dreams that even the no amount of money can change them. But mm -hmm. those are rare to find. So most people, when they have some money coming in, and then you see them with a girlfriend and, you know, you see the girlfriend first sight and you're like, okay, I know what she wants from him. You see him, he gets, you know, he buys a $300,000 car. He starts wearing everything, you know, um, brand. And, and you start thinking, okay, he's losing his mind. And mm -hmm. then on a long enough time frame, I swear, it's never, I'm never wrong. Yeah. Nine months, 12 months after you start seeing the fruits of that. And they're bad always. So is, is I, um, from what I've heard, it's like it's very similar to any other sporting league. I guess the sure. economics of it, like buying, selling players, the players or the best players getting rewarded by lots of money. For sure, that's how they it need is. to put in the work, need to put in the practice. That's completely true. And if uh, I mean, if any of my players go to any um, event, I go to an event. Doesn't matter. We can't walk. Mm -hmm. People are just, they can't walk. Everybody asking for a picture. I'm talking about thousands of people can gather mm -hmm. around them. You know, it gets even dangerous. 
So crazy. Yeah, we need fucking bouncers walking with us. Yeah, it's how it is. So it's crazy, bro. It's, the, like a, it's like a side world. I, th I was looking, the, the, the top 10 organizations are worth an average of $353 million. Yeah, those numbers are a bit off. Or is it more now? Yeah. So every year it just keeps growing and growing and growing. Yeah, yeah. Every, every year it keeps going. Jesus. Yeah. What would you say the, the biggest challenge is facing these esports organizations today? Well, now a lot of um, sports are being touched by this woke bullshit. And, and if, if you touch a sport when it's too early in its infancy, with this uh, way of operating it, you kill it actually. Mm -hmm. And um, you see a lot of executives coming into video games. They come from NBA, they come from NFL, they come from a lot of these um, already successful enterprises and sports and they do more damage than good, you know? So, I mean, that, that if anything, that slows down uh, the growth a little mm -hmm. bit because they're overly safe. They are making everything look like American football type, you know? And video games have a special thing about them. You know, you, you can, the players are much more open to the public. Um, people make fun of each other. We, we used to be the team that makes fun of every team mm -hmm. and even players, you know, we make fun of them. Like we literally laugh at them. And people ended up accepting it because it was just, it was just the funny team, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, but that is like unheard of in sports. You even get fined. I mean, the amount of fines I got, by the way, myself, from, from uh, publishers, just fines because I say some shit. Really? So there was... Bro, one time, one time I, um, I, had a <laughs> I had, there was an event happening in Berlin, okay? And this event is a, is a tournament, a world championship, yeah? And there was a team in America in this specific game. They're, they were the largest team in this specific game in the world. And we never played against them. But I started having beef with the CEO just for no reason. I knew what I wanted. Yeah? Yeah. I was having beef with him. I was like uh, just laughing at them and so on. And so we built so much hype online. We never played against each other, but we built so much hype that everybody was looking forward to our game mm -hmm. if it happens. And then what we did, we um, vandalized the whole city of Berlin with graffiti saying this is our town and then we i got a i got a plane that was flying around berlin the whole time that said the team was called sentinels and it, the, the plane said "Fuck sentinels <laughs> so i just had the plane flying around germany around berlin above their hotel it mm -hmm. was during COVID times as well yeah they couldn't get out of the hotel much but when they did it was just to buy water or something to the supermarket and when they get out they see the city <laughs> vandalized this is our town they go look up and it's this fucking plane saying "Fuck sentinels i had them in we were in their heads mm -hmm. and then we play against them uh, the first game of the tournament actually and boom viewership record yeah, 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 and yeah. like and we beat them actually they didn't lose a single time for like a year and a half then we beat them for the first time that day they were fucked in the head and that's the kind of stuff we do so you, you, you're literally Gorilla marketing everywhere yeah, yeah building up hype marketing yeah I love that shit yeah. I love that I know I mean it was just for fun you know but were you getting hate by doing that of course by their fans but also getting love by, but, but by what ours. about like the other, the other fans though like we you... typically if they have uh, multiple color, uh, colored hairs they oh, would yeah, be against yeah, yeah. us if they would be uh, respectable people they would be for us so mm -hmm. I'm happy with that mm -hmm. I, I was happy to have the audience that is more desirable so and doesn't look like a Pokemon let's talk about the, the obviously the controversial situation that happened with uh, you Basically, what you got kicked out of your own company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, every time I talk about this, it actually uh, part of me is happy, very happy it happened because I look at my current situation and I'm alhamdulillah, everything is, I swear, very good. On the other hand, I'm just fucking angry mm. because it is unfair and life is unfair sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's just so that people know what I'm talking about. Um, Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate, uh, you know, friends of ours. And I don't want to say like we're brothers or anything, you know, yeah. but yeah, you know, close enough. Yeah. And uh, I was with them in um, Bucharest, Romania, just partying and, you know, talking business and just uh, having a normal relationship. Yeah. Uh -huh. And in one of these nights in the, in the club, one of the girls that actually knew me from my job uh, made a video where I showed up with them both. And we're like talking and whatever. And, uh, and bottles are coming and whatever. And she posted online. And it was getting a lot of traction already. It was like almost a thousand likes on Twitter. And I was like, oh shit, 
um, I have to do something because I hate elephants in the room, mm. you know? I hate to hide behind um, a fact. So what I did, I got, um, I downloaded the video and I posted it myself. Before I know it, trending topic in 29 countries. And this just, is on, on your Twitter account? Yeah, because I didn't want to, that somebody else makes the video and that video yeah, becomes yeah, yeah, viral yeah, yeah, and then yeah. it's like, I'm hiding yeah. or something, you know? No, I own up to it. Yeah, yeah. I was partying, whatever. And just trending topic everywhere. It was a madness, madness, yeah? And uh, my phone ringing, bro, it was like insane. The amount of messages and everything uh, from sponsors to billionaires, uh, politicians, uh, actors, blah, 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 that I know, you know? Um, what were they What were they saying? Were they confused? They were like, playing as if they were like my friends mm -hmm. and they were saying, bro, you really have to uh, apologize and denounce misogyny and just uh, say that you don't agree with Andrew Tate, blah, blah, blah. And I was, and it so was like, oh dude, all of them said the same thing. Comply to the mainstream narrative. Yeah, but I didn't think about it that way back then because I didn't think about the mainstream. I, I didn't, I know, of course, I know Tristan and Andrew, but to be honest with you, I maybe, um, even though I spent time with them, I maybe watched back then 10 TikToks. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't consume, I don't consume content from other people, bro. It's not, I don't have the time, you yeah. know? Um, but I knew, of course, I, I, they're, they're friends. I know how they think. I don't, I don't think that dissimilarly about many things, yeah? And uh, but I never thought it would be like this crazy, you know? So um, yeah, people just messaging me and saying, you have to apologize, you have to... Uh, denounce him, you have to be against misogyny publicly, blah, blah, blah. And I was thinking to myself, brother, nobody in the world of video games has done more for women than I have. Mm -hmm. Like my teams, my women teams are world champions in every game I pick. Mm -hmm. Before even women teams existed and were becoming mainstream, I was the one creating these teams, selling them to corporations, making it, making sure there's a circuit, speaking with publishers to make sure there is enough tournaments for them. And, and I was thinking to myself, look at these motherfuckers. They are denounce, they are um, throwing me to the sharks when I have done more than 99.9% .9 of the industry for these girls. But you know, the world now works in a way where it's all about virtue signaling. Mm. And, and it's, 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 it does more in their eyes to speak against something than to do something for that group. So, well, when you're winning, I feel like everybody just wants to see you lose. They're just waiting for you exactly to slip it, up. That's exactly, that's exactly what it is. Mm. Once you become large, yeah, they applaud you. Oh yeah, you go get it, be yourself, succeed, blah, blah, blah. But then you become too big. No, no, that's too big actually, especially in the Western world, yeah? Uh, no, that's too big. You have to lower yourself. No, it's too big. You're, you're too, you're too good. No, no, that's, that cannot be. So that's how the world works, you know? And it was very unfair actually. It was definitely very unfair. But at the same time, I you know, I had two options, right? Either I say to the world, hey guys, I apologize. I I wasn't thinking. Uh, Andrew, but it's not you. I don't agree with Andrew Tate's sexism. And and then I would just always live like a rich worm. Yeah. But now I'm a rich warrior instead, you know? Yeah. I went to bed looking at my, I remember, so I had um, in my home, one of my homes in, um, in Berlin, I had, um, a uh, mirror, a large mirror, a long mirror, right? And it was right by my bed. <laughs> I don't want to, I know what you're thinking. Don't think that, okay? That's <laughs> 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 I was saying it. But I was looking at myself in the mirror. <laughs> Stop, bro. Actually, he has also a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Focus, bro. Focus, right? I was, I, was think, I was looking at myself in the mirror, eye to eye. And I was like, you know what? I'm actually proud of myself. Hmm. And then I would go to bed, sleep eight hours straight. I sleep like a baby. Mm -hmm. Even though my career, everything was up in the air, I was going to get sued by many people. And a lot of drama. You can't even begin yeah, to imagine, yeah, yeah. yeah? And the only person by my side was my, bro was my brother, actually. Um, and What? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, of course, you have people that support you, but the only person physically and emotionally constantly there was my brother, you know? Yeah, well, yeah. I guess whenever you're in the shit, you'll, that's when you know who your real friends are. Yeah, it, it's true. It's true. It is true. And it was also an eye-opening moment for me, you know? Mm. And when I tell you I'm always very open and give the benefit of the 
uh, to the people, you know, and I always uh, imply the good in their hearts and stuff like that. This moment was very eye opening for me because I realized that um, I have to give less face to most people. Yeah. But anyway, I had this option of apologizing and live like a worm or, or just tell everybody to go fuck themselves. And that's what I did. And honestly, bro, looking back, this is the best thing I've ever done because now I know that if I am in the lowest point, I will never sacrifice my principles. Even if in the lowest point, I yeah. will die. Um, I respect that. Yeah. And, and that also for people that are people I respect, they respect it as a baseline. There's a baseline respect when they meet me and they know the story. I don't even have to introduce myself. If they know the story, that story speaks very highly of me. Mm -hmm. They already know they can trust me at a very deep level if we were to shake a hand, you know? And that to me is just worth everything. And uh, no, the knowledge of, in my head, the knowledge that uh, nobody can fuck me. Nobody can destroy my principles. Even if the lowest comes, my brother is there. Even if the lowest comes, my brain is strong enough to withstand anything coming my way. That is like, it's a superpower, bro. I swear, I have no fear. When I say I have no fear, I truly really tell you I have no fear. There's nothing you tell me right now to do that if he has a strong enough reward, I would have fear for. Nothing. Like, think about it, okay? I've lost everything. I want everything. I've lost everything. I want everything. I've hit the rock bottom. I'm, look at me. I'm chilling, bro. That happened like, what, five months ago? I'm yeah. chilling. I'm happy, bro. I look at my life. It's better than ever. What the fuck can happen? There's nothing that can happen. I can lose everything. I can lose all my businesses, all my money, all the family even, bro. I know I will withstand it. I know it. Mm -hmm. Without a glimpse of doubt. Fuck. And that is, bro, that to me is like, it's so powerful, you know? Yeah. Nothing can kill me. Unless I die, I can't die. And do you think you would not you would have learned that lesson if that hadn't happened? No, I think you have to go through hardship. Mm -hmm. To prove yourself that you have the balls to withstand yeah. it, really. Because you always have the, there's always in the back of every man's head, unless you are in that edge, in the back of your head, there's always the doubt. Am I man enough to deal with this? Mm -hmm. And even if you think you are, until you really live through it, you're not sure. Yeah. And now I know I, I am. That has more value than trillions of dollars, more value than um, millions of models, more value than anything, anything. Mm -hmm. Nothing has more value than this. And I guess all the v adventures and businesses which are going to come your way, like you're going into that with the ultimate confidence. Ultimate confidence. Yeah. Bro, it's true. We have no how, fear, bro. How he can stay today here where he's staying because he was always doing what he has in mind. Mm -hmm. Now he comes in a point, the people want to tell him what he has to do. No, it's not gonna mm -hmm. work, you know? He's like, we decided together, we spoke like, at least he decided what he's doing, but we were speaking about it, and I told him, come down, just chill now, let the world go crazy. Mm -hmm. For what? What do you did? You have to agree with someone if you sit with someone on the table? So it's ridiculous. It's insane, bro. So ridiculous. And even Just because you, you agree, were there. Even if you agree, it's it's your mind, man. It's your opinion. Mm -hmm. Someone want to tell you your opinion, what you have to say, what you have to do? No, not in our world, yeah. you know? Yep. And he, he built G2 because he is what he is in the way how he acts because of that G2 is G2, mm -hmm. you know? And there is no point then when you are in the sky and someone tells you, okay, now you have to go down. No, it's not going to work, you know? And yeah, it was a good time for everything. Alhamdulillah, look, we're sitting in your nice apartment. Beautiful we're apartment, by the way, brother. You live in an amazing place. We have a nice view uh, on a nice guy, on a nice ocean. Mm. All is good, you know, and we are going forward. So, two so arms, two legs, everybody healthy. So, so after that, what, what happened? You were, you were forced to yeah, step so down? It was like... I had a few and you had options. to sell like what and how many what percentage of the company did you own at that point in time? Yeah, so so I still own a large percentage of the company. So you don't have to give that away. I, I didn't give anything away. Okay. Uh, I, I didn't give anything away. Sure not. Sure not. It's my it's still uh well that's company. pretty still you know, I, I founded the company. I'm I'm still uh I don't 
I was about to say, um, uh, I will not commit mistakes on what I shouldn't say, but yeah, I own a large percentage of the company to this day. And I still founded the company. And most of the people that follow the company still see it as my company. Mm -hmm. And even if I'm not operationally involved, I am not operationally involved. Everything they're doing, they're doing themselves. That must be pretty frustrating that you own a large percentage of a company which you can't lead. You know what? It it used to be, but now is I take it as you know the fruits of my labor is that those shares are worth on a long enough time frame, three, four, five years, is worth a billion dollars. So I'm already a, I'm chilling, bro. I really <laughs> am chilling. Yeah. And and at the same time, I can do other things that have nothing to do with this business. Which mm -hmm. by the way, I was already growing a bit old. You know, like it's. I've done a lot of things in my life, but the problem I always had with video games is the following. What happens if Elon Musk leaves Tesla, Tesla tomorrow? He says, I'm done with Tesla. I will do other things. Yeah. Tesla stock yeah, plummets. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why? Because why is the founder deciding to leave? Mm. But if he gets forced out, of course the Tesla stock will, will get a hit, but eventually it will go back up. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it wasn't his decision. It's not like he wanted to get out. And now what you see is that as a result of this, my worst fear, which is the company imploding when I'm no longer there operationally, is no longer there. The company's thriving, brother. The company's thriving. And I own an amazing portion of it. And I'm chilling, bro. This is the dream of every founder, to create something that outlasts his presence. I've done that. I didn't know that. For some reason, I just thought that you were forced to give up all your shares. No, no, but the fact I mean, you still I, have I've, it. I've been selling shares. I mean, thankfully, that's part of the reason why I'm doing really well in life. Uh, I've been selling shares since the beginning, mm -hmm. here and there, still insurers, still insurers, still insurers, every time it's an opportunity. But um, but um, yeah, now now it's like straight up share value. So you still have a lot of love for the company. Yeah, yeah. 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 And do you, are you in communications with the current yeah, CEO? Yeah, we, do, yeah we, we, we're talking all the time. And uh, yeah, it, it, will, it will not be long before um, a big chunk, another big chunk comes my way. But yeah, it's just, it's normal, bro. I built it. Mm -hmm. It's doing really well. It's really hard to create a company that doesn't rely on the founder to be there operationally. And I did. So it is pride on my end. And it should be pride also for the shareholders because everybody has this fear. Yeah. So what the hell is next? Bro, conquering the world. That's why I'm here in Dubai with my brother. Um, we are still going to do things within the context of video games, but it will not be similar. I still like video games, you know? Of course, I grew up like that and I, lo I know a lot. I know everything about video games. I know the mechanics of a video game, whether a video game is gonna do well or not. I know how to, how to deal with that audience. I know how to sell games and things to that audience. I know exactly, mm -hmm. you know, how to do business with that audience. And a big portion of entertainment nowadays is video games. Yeah. I understand that industry to perfection. So why wouldn't I take advantage of it? Yeah, 20% of my time will, will be invested, of our time, will be invested in, in this. Uh, most decisions I have taken in my life, since we know each other, we have taken it together. So um, the rest of the 80% of the time is invested in other things that are really fun, actually. I, we, I'm really enjoying myself mm -hmm. through um, events, um, hospitality and things of that nature, the circle, join the circle.ai. Uh, what is that? Yeah, what is that about? I would have to kill you then. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, join the circle AI. Yeah, the circle. It's it's. Um, we can't really talk about it yet, but you so can what, put your email in there. What happens if someone clicks on that link? You can put your email in there. Ah. That's it. Okay. That is it. Carlos, nothing else. Well, I imagine since you're pretty damn good at building communities, something good is coming. Thank you very much. I, I, re I really appreciate that. <laughs> and and so are you, bro. For how long are you doing this now? What, the, the social media thing or the, the podcast? Just content creation in general. Started 2016. I guess that's when it's kind of really started with YouTube. Like before we met, we met in this dinner, right? Yeah. And before we met, I mean, when I, when I, I didn't know you were going to be there. And, and, um, and I was there, oh shit, yeah. I know, I know this guy actually. I've I've seen him, you know. Mm. And I always thought he's a perfect body, you know, <laughs> really nice charisma, ni nice guy. You know, I told my brother, yeah, this guy is, is very nice, very nice speaking, um, looks very good, is very charismatic and stuff like. That. I told him, yeah, I told him. So well, I think it's it's in today's day and age, it's so important to build your brand, but to also have a presence online. Like if you have that presence online, especially like I, I'm not doing anything for anybody else. I, I am my own boss. 
So I have the freedom to literally create Perfect. whatever type of content that I want. And amazing things have happened to me. And I've met amazing people just from having a platform. Obviously, I had to put in a hell of a lot of hard work to build it up to what it is. But, you know, we wouldn't be here having this conversation if I hadn't done that. Like, you know, the, the hardest challenge that um, content creators that start in a vertical like fitness, for example, is to deviate from that. And I think yeah. you've done it really well, you know? Yeah. Like well, I've seen you do a lot of things that have nothing to do with fitness that are getting very good views. It's yeah. very important, bro. Well, it was a lot of people. I remember when I made the transition because I was doing fitness for like three or, f three or four years and I was like, this is how many workouts I'm going to do. Like I've done way too many workouts and I didn't want to be so one dimensional where people are like, oh yeah, that's the guy that just does fitness. Yeah. And my interests changed. So I started just, I was basically just making content on whatever was interesting me at that point in time. There were some videos that wouldn't do very well. Some would do really well, but I didn't really care because I was just enjoying it. And it has, I think now it's definitely put me uh, in quite a powerful position because I'm at a point now where I can go down so many different routes But at the end of the day, I just want to do what I enjoy and obviously what is ultimately going to be pretty lucrative. Very good, brother. And, and uh, people come to you as well. And well, with yeah, this podcast, we yeah. have a lot of opportunity as well. Hopefully, inshallah, it becomes very, very good. Yeah. Millions and millions of views. Where do you see yourself in five years from today? Welcome to our podcast, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good question. You know, I, I, I don't even know if I plan that far ahead. Um, I always think it like years at a time. But I, I want to be I want to be known and respected. I know that's for sure. But this 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 podcast is um I'm really enjoying it. And it's given me an opportunity to to meet lots of cool people. So I think if this the way it's working so far, it's paying off. So maybe I just double down on it, make more episodes, do a bit of traveling, go meet people, and then, you know, hopefully get involved in some business. I need to start investing more. Property is a thing I, I know absolutely nothing about. I want to learn more about it. Probably you need to come back again and do another episode where you talk about property. But uh, yeah, it's it's exciting. And it's, I've uh, learned a lot from property just spending time with my brother. Mm -hmm. I, I swear, I had no idea either about it. Uh, but once you meet somebody that knows what he's talking about and what he's doing, bro, it doesn't matter what region in the world it is, he will know exactly what to look for. What yeah, to because you have the feeling, you know, it's uh, sure... Everywhere is a different place, a different market. You have different prices. You have different. Uh, sorry. <laughs> you have uh, different buyers. You know, it's like in your business, you have a different audience in uh, mm -hmm. different places, mm -hmm. and but you have a feeling for where something can be very good yeah. or something not. You know, it's. Uh, Just speak about the apartment and you come in and how is the view, how is the furniture, how is the uh, sun, you know, mm. like small details that gives you a big feeling, you mm. know, and yeah, you just have to get a good vision. You, if I introduce you to these things, you will learn very fast about. Yeah. And if, you, you, if you see uh, one of our offices, I have one office in uh, Berlin, no. if, if you enter that office, <laughs> the first thing you ask is like, okay, how much have you guys spent on like, <laughs> on like interior design? It mm -hmm. was all him. Everything him, bro. I swear. Yeah, I have a good vision. I'm mm -hmm. a detailist. I, I like, I like fashion. I like architect. Mm -hmm. You know, I like uh, room furniture and uh, the style. I have an eye for it. It's, well, it also, it's my passion. It know? makes a big difference. I've noticed the, the environment that you're in, where you live, has a huge impact on your mindset. Sure, That's man. why I, I friggin' love this. But even when I, I travel, I do a lot of traveling, yeah. I always miss this apartment. There's something about it, the, the, the view. It's a good like apartment, just, bro. I swear, it's very good apartment. The living room is perfect. Every apartment has a different energy, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you have here an amazing vibe. Yeah? You come in, you feel free and you don't, like, it's also like you have all the big windows here you don't feel uh, claustrophobic yeah yeah, yeah. You, you have a big uh, uh, a wide um, view yeah and this is uh, important I, i also need it when i go in my apartment i i need a, a, a big view you know mm -hmm. to it's it's the same in life you know, i don't like to go in restaurants and to sit to facing the uh, wall yeah i have always to face the biggest view like the biggest view wide view Who who you in terms of the interior design? Who's your favorite interior designer? Um, 
I'm my own. <laughs> <laughs> and I fully believe that, by the way. I fully believe that. Like, I, I, I cannot give it to someone else. Mm -hmm. If I go in an apartment, I have the vision straight. I go inside, I know where to put what, what to do, the colors. You know, I always use yeah, I think warm that, colors. I like to use warm colors. I think that's and something it, you're born with. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Because like, they, they, they see things completely different to yeah. how normal people see things. And I, I want to say something actually about this because now you see a lot of um, what is called the the red pill community. Yeah, mm. um, you see a lot of um, these men. They're just so masculine and so blah and so you know. But it, and then I look at my brother. He's like the most masculine man I know. I swear. Like I'm I'm saying this mm. from my heart. The most masculine man I know in the way he acts, his gestures, the way he speaks, the way everything. But then he has these soft skills that most people in the Red Pill community would consider soft skills for mm -hmm. a woman or something like that, you know? And and it just, that is what I told you before, it doesn't make any sense that now everybody tries to be uh, Loud the, the godfather, no. uh, mafioso, you know, just be yourself. My yeah, brother, right. I'm telling you, is the person in my life I have met that is the most masculine. Mm -hmm. And he focuses on the way things look, smell, fashion, design, mm. uh, the way he makes pictures and videos. If you see good pictures on my profiles, uh, he took it. <laughs> he took them. Yeah, I swear, I swear, I say it openly. Yeah. He has a very good eye for how things look and the perspective of things, the lighting, and 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 you know what I mean? Mm. Proper this gentleman. Proper gentleman, yes. Yeah. Proper gentleman. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's lacking a little bit in today's world. Like you it's said, with, the, with the, all these people trying to be super masculine. Yes. Usually they're actually really quite insecure and there's a lot of traits True. of what a masculine like a shell, man. you know? Yeah. You, you don't have to be always super masculine, you know? Mm -hmm. There are different situations in life. If you have a baby on your arm or a small uh, little child, a small little girl, how you can be masculine with a small little girl, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like she is cute, she's sweet. You have to act different with her. Yes. You cannot mm -hmm. be like this masculine. It's, it's not going to work, you know? You have to be masculine in the steps where you have to be masculine in the situation. Mm -hmm. When you have to uh, be a man, be a man. If you go to partying and uh, you are a nice guy, then you are a nice guy there and you have a nice smile. You know, you give to the people a nice smile. Always smile. I tell always to the people, why are you looking so, like, so on a, on a, uh, like on a picture, yeah, so serious. And man, we are partying here. You just drank six uh, glasses of vodka and uh, now you want to make a big man here at the picture, man, come on. Yeah. yeah. Have fun. Enjoy your life. And for sure, if you have to be a man in front of your wife, can be your man, you know, but there's different situations in life. Mm -hmm. You have, the, it's exactly what I said, be a man in the situation where you have to be a man. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the things, enjoy your life, man, and give a smile. <laughs> yeah, you guys seem to be enjoying life pretty, pretty you, well. You, I'm doing love. You, you know why? Because, um, so when I think about, about our life, I think there's no better life. I legitimately believe there's nothing that I can think of that would make our life better. This is the peak life experience. Why? Because we go through the lowest lows. And when I mean lowest lows, you have to understand there are the lowest lows. I don't speak about this shit. Mm -hmm. Lowest lows, highest highs, lowest lows, highest highs. And then you see your character and your brother's character in all these lowest lows and highest highs. You see how you react to problem solving. You see how you react to challenges, to the good moments, to the bad moments. And that experience of contrast is the most beautiful thing that it, that it is. There's nothing more beautiful than that. Mm -hmm. you, when, like you said, when you're working, you're working 100%. When you're enjoying life, you're enjoying life 100%. When you're with a girl, you're making her feel like the world is perfect. You know, when you, it's like, it's, it's, it's almost like breathing every experience to the fullest and taking advantage of every moment because tomorrow a track might just explode your head. Mm -hmm. It is the truth, you know? And and I when I think of our lives, I legitimately think there's not a better way to. I, I can't imagine a better life experience. And 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 if you you can uh, you can say yeah you can be richer you can be you can have more of this you can have more of that. But the power is to uh, the the journey towards those things yeah, yeah. is really what empowers somebody. Because you both start from nothing. Nothing, bro. If I would have you know, I, I yeah. have a son, right? I have a son. My son will not have uh, the classic spoiled sons. Uh, life. Yeah. My son will have nothing. If he wants something, he has to make it. I'm happy to help him. I'm happy to show him the way. I will show him the way. 
when he's old enough, he will do everything for him, for me. He will do whatever, driving cars. He will do getting bags. Every, he will be my personal assistant. He will do everything that he doesn't want to do. He will understand how money is made and he will make it himself. Because I don't want to take away from him the opportunity to feel this feeling I'm feeling. Yeah. Being self-made, learning yeah. life through the tribulations, through the problems, through the hardship, and going out as a better man is literally the best life experience. I can think of something better. And I want my son to experience that and mm -hmm. my many future sons, inshallah. If you had a daughter inshallah. in the future, how would you? It's different. I, 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 you, you say that I don't have a daughter, right? But I know how I am with, um, with good women. Mm -hmm. And the way in which I am with good women tells me a lot about the way in which I will be with my daughter mm -hmm. or daughters. Um, for me, there are not many things as beautiful as knowing that a person I'm spending time with has a very, a woman in this case, has a very kind heart. I w there's nothing I wouldn't do for this person. Mm -hmm. Nothing. And I want her to have no stress. I want her to have no problems in her head. I'll take care of everything, you know. I want just you to experience, to enjoy life, you know. I will show you the world. I will, we will travel together to places. I will make sure you experience all the beautiful things that money can buy and all the beautiful things that a good emotional connection with someone strong can get you. Mm -hmm. And I think the same way I would react with my daughter. I think my daughter, if you ask me, bro, if my daughter will have Air Max bags, Range Rover, everything. It's just my son will have nothing, actually. Yeah. But that's the way I, I, uh, I grew I, up. I, I agree with that. I grew up like yeah. this, you know. My dad is yeah. and my mom are amongst the best things that happened in my life. They are very traditional. Um, my dad even had cancer at some point and still kept two jobs so that he was getting paid a few times here and there. I mean, he was doing anything for the house. He had no hair. He was doing electric electrician work, bro. I swear to God, superhero. He was never rich, whatever. Superhero to me. And I have goosebumps, bro, talking about my dad. Yeah, it's still alive, but... Do you think um, that's where you got a lot of your work ethic from? Yes, no, no doubt. I have goosebumps, right, sir. It, may, <laughs> I'm, it makes me emotional, bro, my dad. And, and when I had my son, I started truly realizing what my dad was for me. Yeah. If you ask me right now, if I could go back in time, what would things I would do? Deep? I have so many goosebumps right now. I swear I can't stop. <laughs> I swear everywhere. Uh, if you ask me, uh, there are not many things I would change in my life because I'm the way I am because of those mistakes I also committed. Mm. But it would be to not speak badly to my to my dad and to my mom. And when they told me, I'm not sure about this. I don't think this is good. Instead of uh, me trying to be the big boy and do things my way, I should have listened. Because your parents might not always be right, but they always want the best for you yeah. at the very deep level, or at the deepest level. Yeah. And it's hard to understand that until you have a son or a daughter yourself. Mm. Really hard. Well, because, that's, that's an experience I'm definitely looking forward bro, to. I, I swear, man. It's like I'm talking about my dad and my mom, and, I, and my world mm. goes crazy, you know, in my head. Yeah, is 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 having, and, and I'm very happy, grateful to have parents that have taught me all these things, you know. And and I don't have a sister, but I have a, a blood brother, uh, Alejandro. I love him to death, obviously. Um, and the way in which my parents brought us up, the way in which my mom was treated by my dad, the whole thing just made me understand life the way I understand it, and I enjoy life this way. Mm -hmm. It might be right, it might be wrong, but it's what I know. Have, have you got any kids? No. Still. How old are you? Because you're 32. I'm, I'm 32. 20, 29 years old. 29. Like, inshallah, the next few years. Um, I want also, like, I would say between three and six kids. Mm -hmm. um, what God gives me, like, doesn't matter boys or girls yeah. like and uh, what it matters inshallah healthy and the rest uh, is good you know um, yeah you're both in a very financially comfortable position where you can raise a lot of kids 
But has there been, have you noticed any issues with having what seems to be like an endless amount of money? What do you mean? Like, do you know they say more money, more problems? Yeah, it's true, completely. It is true. It is true. But ex extraordinary um, life experiences require you to solve extraordinarily complicated problems sometimes. Mm -hmm. It is normal. But the, I always like to think somebody that is going late to work because the bus ticket is over, the 10, the 10 trips are over, and then has to talk to the driver. The driver doesn't let him in. He, they have to go buy a new one. They have maybe no cash with them. They will be late for work. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. But then tax authorities contact you. You owe them 7.5 million euros. That's a problem. Yeah. Both of them will have similar stress levels to the person experiencing it. Mm -hmm. But one of them is a bus ticket problem and the other one is a 7.5 million euro problem. Uh, I want to live the life where yeah. I play with the big hand, you know, yeah. in poker. It's like if you're playing with a two and a four, sure, you can win some hands, but if you play with an ace and a king, you will win most hands mm -hmm. or more hands, right? And I like live life like this. And that requires also to solve harder problems. But that, what is, uh, to me, that's what life is. You know, to me, life is experiencing everything that life has for you. And even, by the way, I don't get sick often. And if I get sick, it very quickly goes away. You see, it's like, it's actually shocked sometimes at how quick I heal. It's insane. But when it hits me, bro, it's halas. I need three, four hours, sweats and everything. Yeah. But when I'm, um, uh, having all these sweats and fe fever and whatever, I'm enjoying it, bro. Mm -hmm. It's all, it sounds weird, but I'm, I'm, I make it a point to enjoy the, to experience the full pain. Mm -hmm. Because then one day, tomorrow maybe, I have no pain. And then I will, it's like the joy will be through the roof. Yeah. Uh, now I'm in Dubai. You know how much I, I enjoy the sun, the weather? Well, part of it is because well, I, I hate Berlin weather. And I was living there for a while. And it was very, very cold, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't like cold. I'm Spanish. But now I am here and this is like, I, this is amazing, you know? It's the contrast. Mm -hmm. The contrast of life is what makes it nice. And, and we, we don't have problems, bro. Yeah. We have just different situations in life. But problems, we don't have problems. What problems, is problems? A problem is when you got cancer. A problem is when you don't have food to eat. A problem is when you live in a, uh, you live in a war and you have to um, take care of your child. You know, mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't know Very how to point, survive next day. Uh, Very good point. This, is, this is a problem. Yeah. Anything else in life are just different situations, special situations, and we have to handle that, you know? Anything else is, it's not a problem because of that. Like, I just wanted to uh, come to You're the right. point. You're we right. don't have problems. Just cancel this word problem, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, we cannot have problems as we are sitting now here in Dubai uh, and uh, enjoying our yeah, life. Yeah, one day you problem know? will come, you know? That's how life is, you know? Uh, inshallah, not many, but... That's how I life think is. You're going to be fully prepared to handle that problem. Well, you know, after what you've been through, it, yeah. it, it, God tests those. Uh, his his closest. God tests his yeah. best because he wouldn't. God wouldn't give you anything you cannot withstand. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that. And um, the toughest battles are are fought by the toughest warriors. You know, I really believe that as well. Yeah. So whatever problem comes as well, if it's strong problem, it means God believes you can take it. Yeah. And we appreciate that God tests us in this moment because God is giving us a situation to be stronger after, you know, mm -hmm. because every situation you uh, face and you solve this situation, you're stronger after, you know how to handle it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. We are in a position to get tested by God. Yep. I respect the grind as well. Cause I mean, you, you've obviously done so well for yourself. You could literally just spend the rest of your time just enjoying the money you've earned from building this organization same with you but you choose to still put in that work you guys every time i see you it's like you you've either come from a meeting or you're going to a yeah, meeting it's it's like you're you're it's enjoying true. life a lot but then you're also working your asses off yeah so it's thoroughly deserved but this is the competition in life bro yeah we like even if you're you're a billionaire you have like let's say okay what is like when you can live life without to think about you have 300 millions on your bank account 
you can live your rest of your life without to think about money. Yeah? But um, I don't know. What is then the, the, the competition in life? What is the game in life? Yeah? There is no game. You get bored. You, yeah, you get you, bored. You get, you get bored, bro. That's why we people, are made, we need the... Yeah, we need, we need the challenge, you know? And yeah. uh, the best thing you can do is to force these challenges upon yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why people that have too much money and don't have a job anymore, don't have the ambition anymore, they try to do skiing or golf or, you know, they try to drive cars or something just to have some kind of thrill. Thrill. But it's all shallow, mm. you know? You need the thrill of putting your reputation on the line, your credibility on the line, show people that you're better than yesterday, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I know, on a lot, it's like 20 years from now, if I'm still capable, yeah? I know I will look back and say, the person I was at 32 is like much worse than the person I am at. Now I'm 52. Now I feel like I'm the, at the peak. Yeah. You know, now I feel at the peak with 52. I'm sure that will be like that, like that, you know? My body will look better. My business will look better. Everything will, you know, my relationship with my brother will be even better. Everything will be better. I know that. And that is because I go through this, inshallah, I go through these challenges with grace and I take them as nice learning situations, you know? We see life similarly here, bro, similarly. And if I am um, having a, an off day, it happens, you know? Humans are like this. Uh, the, the value of spending time with somebody that truly loves you from his heart and will tell you, brother, come on, mm. you're not a bitch, let's go. And vice versa, that has a lot of value, bro, because everybody has weak moments, yeah? Everybody has weak moments, everybody. I'm not gonna lie, I'm slightly jealous of the brotherhood you have. I don't feel, I don't feel like I, I have that. But, um, well, inshallah, if you, yeah. if you look for it, it'll come. If you truly look for it and you truly look for people that challenge you yeah. and with good heart, you, I swear to God, bro, it will come. You you look hard enough, it will come. Mm. It will come. I mean, uh, we, we just met, but who knows, inshallah, five years from now, three years from now, maybe we are as close as this. That would be amazing. It's not like, it's just, you know, our brother, my, my brother and I, in our circle, we curate our circle so much that anybody within the circle is, we know, is truly a good, a good man or a good, yeah, good person mm -hmm. that we can trust them at every level. And inshallah, we will meet people like this that we can continue to curate our circle with. Awesome. That was an uh, absolute pleasure. Appreciate yeah, that. Likewise, bro. You're very good at this. <laughs> You're very good at this. And they, I swear, I don't know, people cannot see the setup, right? But I'm sure they've seen your yeah, content a thousand seen, times. Bro, you, you have amazing energy. I swear. Good energy, bro. Very, like, you're so, how to say, your energy. I know if you want to, to go out and to conquer the world, you can mm -hmm. with your energy. But at the same time, for me, you are a man. You sit here, you're so quiet. You have a like calm. a very calm energy, Balance, you know, equilibrium. humble. This is this is nice, you know, nice to see. Yeah. You 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 don't need to attract people with big speaking, showing pictures, uh, and uh, you know what I mean. Yeah, like, people know you. You speak without to speak. Your attitude is speaking. You know, this is. Uh, I appreciate that, people. Appreciate yeah, my brother. That. Thank you very much. No worries. <laughs> Where thank you to the cameraman as well that's taking care of everything. <laughs> What was your name? Chris. Chris. Thank you, Chris. Where, where can everybody find you? I know you've got a pretty exclusive Instagram. Yours is pretty much yeah, open. He, he doesn't like publicity. He doesn't yeah. like... Uh... Let's see. We are we are now in this point. We yeah. are figuring out like... People probably going to want to hear more from you guys. That's the thing. The, the, like I had, I have an uh, Instagram account like the real asset, but uh, I never used it so much, you know, because uh, now uh, I was living in Berlin and it's the people, they are not so open-minded. Mm -hmm. If you're a special person, yeah. you have a lot of attention, you drive a lot of nice cars, you have a brother, he's very loud outside and he is uh, making noise, you know, you, one of us has to take care about all the situation, you know. If he opens the Instagram, it's running. because I'm pushing him to do so. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. But everyone else can go to join the circle. Um, yeah, so uh, for him, it's at the real asset yeah. in uh, Instagram. For me, my Instagram is at Ocelot, Ocelot T E World, Ocelot World. But if you write Carlos R all together, it will mm -hmm. show up. And Twitter at Carlos R. And then for the circle, I mean, the, within a month, people will uh, know significantly more, but for now, join the circle.ai 
is uh, is all I can give you. And uh, thank you very much for the interview, brother. You're uh, very good at this. And even off camera, I told you like their energy, character, perfect, bro. As a good man. Yeah, man. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.